Everyday Juggler, your source for juggling highlights, interviews, tutorials, and reviews. And now your host, Sean Livingston. Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out Everyday Juggler. Today, we're going to get to hang out with David Kane. David Kane's been juggling for over 30 years. He's got a number of records. He's in the double digits. He is a juggling historian, and he's amassed one of the biggest historical juggling props collections. And he's known as the juggler for Jesus. Hey, David, would, thanks so much for being here today. Well, it's my pleasure. And uh, would you mind filling in some gaps and telling us about a couple of your records? Uh, sure. Uh, I've got a variety of different weird records. Um, uh, in 2010, I uh, broke a longstanding Guinness record for the tallest object ever balanced on uh, anyone's chin. Uh, it was a 60-foot pole. Actually, you can see it right back in the corner. It's a telescoping pole, so it goes down to about 5 feet, but it is in 12-foot segments, and it goes up to 60 feet. And so I did that. Uh, I'm in the 2015, now 14, uh, Guinness Book for uh, being the first person to juggle four clubs while lying on my back. And I can now do a little bit over more than a flash of five clubs lying on my back which is really tough. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> um, I've got uh, some bo- a lot of boomerang world records. I juggle boomerangs, um, some ball, ball spinning world records, uh, lasso world record, um, a variety of weird things. You know, but one of the things I'm known for in the world of juggling is being uh, very versatile, and so my records kind of uh, show that as well. Yeah. Um, well, tell me about your, your lasso world record. Oh, uh, it was, I was doing, I, I have a show that I do, uh, a cowboy themed show I do, and somebody asked me to do a world record uh, as part of that, and so I, I stat, we established a world record for the uh, most times doing a handshake, uh, which is when you're spinning, a, a, you're doing a wedding ring, which is spinning the lasso around your body, and instead of keeping your arm above you, you transfer the, it behind your back and in front and behind and back. Okay. That's called a handshake. So it's the most consecutive times doing a handshake oh, okay. uh, in a row. So Awesome. Um, as far as it, one of the things I like to do is for like you've mastered something and kind of give tips to, to others right. on how to do it. So, you know, you're talking about juggling clubs on your back. Right. Um, how, how did you get good at that? Where did you start? Well, I, I, I'd, I had done juggling on my back for a long time. I, I had the world record, I think I still do, of uh, longest time doing four balls on my back. And I could do five balls and I flash six on my back. And But I'd never seen anyone do any more than three clubs on their back. And so I said, oh, I'm going to see what I can do with this and uh, learn to do it. Uh, and then um, – I started with really light clubs and got good at that and then worked, worked up to bigger clubs. Uh, I actually started with kids clubs. Um, but actually I don't recommend working on that. At least for me, I developed a cyst inside my shoulder joint oh. from working on it so much. And so I had to stop. I, I don't do that anymore at all, okay. but I got, I got good video of me doing long runs with four and some runs with five as well. So, mm. um, so if you do do that, put something soft under your shoulders, maybe. I guess so. I don't know. It's, I think it was just the motion of doing doing it up here. It's a weird motion. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, for about a year, I suffered from a, a, a really painful uh, joint in there. And uh, we did an MRI, and it turned out I developed a cyst in there from doing that trick. Mm-hmm. So we'll just say uh, practice at your own risk. Yes. <laughs> All right, so you've been juggling as as I said for over thirty years. What where'd you start? What inspired you to juggle? Boredom. Uh, when I was twelve years old, uh, I was really bored during the summer, and uh, found three balls in a drawer. I went out to my backyard and uh, just taught myself the basic three ball juggle. Uh, I, I somehow knew what the cascade was supposed to look like or what the pattern was supposed to look like, and so I. In about an hour and a half, I taught myself the basic cascade. And um, a couple weeks later, I went, went away to church camp uh, for the first time. And one of the activities we had that week was uh, they broke everybody into teams. And they had different 
things you had to do. And one thing you had to do was you had to pick someone on your team that could do something that you didn't think anyone on any of the other teams could do. Mm -hmm. And so I said, well, I can juggle three rocks for 30 catches. And I did that and no one else could do it. And I thought that was pretty cool. And so when I got home from camp, I went to the local library and found some books on juggling and been doing it for 34 years now. All right. So you started with books. That's good. Yeah. Um, all right. So what, what, when you got to college or in high school or beyond, was there anything, were there any times where you didn't, where you stopped or were you strong all the way through? No, I was strong all the way through pretty much. Um, I, from the moment I entered junior high, I was juggling. Uh, my high school already had an established juggling club when I got to high school. Okay. Um, uh, during high school, uh, when I was 16, I started working at uh, performing at a local amusement park. And I did that all the way through high school and college. Wow. Uh, except, for, except for one summer where I toured, uh, toured with a circus. Okay. Um, so I've been juggling you know, professionally since I was 14 years old, for, so 32 years. Okay. Um, and uh, I have, a, have an unused college degree. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, right. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm – then the plan always was to juggle. Right. Uh, I just went to college as a backup. So. For, the, for the backup or for the parents? Yeah, both. <laughs> uh, what, what do you – do you think that since you were involved in those communities, the circus and the clubs, is that what kept you going through all those years? Or did you uh, really just kind of – inside of you, you're a juggler? Well, I, I think inside of me I'm a juggler. Um you know, and there were certain times in my life where I, I spent a little bit more time on music than I did on juggling. I also do a lot with music. I, uh, I compose music, I sing, and I play seven different instruments. So, wow. um, there have been s even times where I was working as full time as a professional juggler. Uh, apart from the performing, I was there were certain times where I was spending a lot more time doing music. Right. Um, I've written all the music for five uh, Broadway-style stage musicals. Wow. And uh, the, doing those took enormous amounts of time to do. Uh, but uh, nowadays, it's uh, back to mainly juggling. <laughs> You're quite the individual composer, too. Who knew? Well, it, it's called having no social life most of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. It sounds like you had lots well, of people around you. No, it's, it's true. I... I I'm uh, naturally a. I'm very comfortable on stage, but I'm naturally, especially in my private life, a very introverted person. And so, uh, I'm fine to spend two or three days where I don't see another human being, and I'm just working on juggling stuff, or museum stuff, or music, or all of the above. Okay. Uh, yeah. You know, you you wouldn't tell just from the way that you're able to carry on conversations so so well. You know. It well, seems like you love people. I, oh, I, I do love people, but you know, th they say the the true measure of if someone's an introvert or an extrovert is a, a, an introvert. Well, when an introvert is with a big group of people, it saps them of energy. When mm -hmm. an extrovert is with a big group of people, it gives them energy. And mm -hmm. that's definitely true for me. That uh, you know, before I go on stage, I don't want to be among a bunch of people. I want to be alone, conserve right. my energy, so that when I'm on stage, mm -hmm. I give all I have. What do you, What do you think? Do you think that most jugglers are introverts or extroverts? Oh, I see a mix of the two. Uh, you know, an, an introvert can spend a lot of time by themselves developing the skills, uh, but then an extrovert uh, may be more comfortable on stage naturally. I mean, I do a 45 minutes an hour talking comedy, uh, and often faith, you know, Christian uh, stage show. I'm more or less a pretty high te uh, technical ability comedy jumper. Mm -hmm. But I didn't start that way. I The first, oh, six or seven years easy, I was a completely silent uh, technical juggler. Mm. Um and if you would have told me back then that I would be a talking comedy juggler, I would have said, you're out of your mind. Yeah. Because uh, when I was very young, I had uh, uh, some speech impediments, or as I like to say, peach impediments. Uh, 
And so talking in front of a group certainly was not my thing. Right. But that just developed over time. Okay. So um, you also have a twin brother. I do. That also juggles. Yes. Uh, did Who started first? <clears throat> uh, I did. Uh, I started two year, about a year and a half, probably before he did. Uh, and uh, then he, he started. Um, he didn't take it nearly as seriously. He's never taken it as seriously as I did. But I mean, he, he worked with me at, at the amusement park. Uh, he was, uh, he was the talking part of the act and I was the silent, uh, technical part of the act for the most part. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, there's a funny story about what got him really to invest a bit more time getting better. When we were 16, uh, just turned 16, uh, he got a job at a local fast food restaurant flipping hamburgers. On the same day as his first day doing that, I was the opening act for Grateful Dead. Oh, wow. Famous rock band. <laughs> and uh, we both came back. Does that our, make you a deadhead? Uh, no, I'm not a deadhead. <laughs> not at all. But uh, so I, uh, we came back from our day of work, and I asked him, how much did you make today? He said, $24. How much? He said, how much did you make? I said, $900. He said, man, I got to start practicing jumping. <laughs> So, yeah, that would have convinced me too. Yes, yes. <laughs> but uh, he and I are very close, extremely close. Um, uh, he actually is the assistant curator for the Jetling Museum uh, and helps me out a ton with that. Um, and uh, together we hold the title of America's Most Talented Twins. We won that on, on the Today Show a couple years ago. Um, and, uh, our children work together a lot. We each have a daughter, and they perform together uh, oh. as an act. Um, they do juggling as well? Yep. Uh, I have a son and a daughter. They both are talented jugglers. And he has one daughter, and she's very talented as well. Wow. So, Runs in the and they're family. All, they're all close in age, and so, um, uh, yeah, it w works out well. I just had my first daughter five and a half weeks ago. Oh, great. Congratulations. Um, thank you. Hopefully, Hopefully, I'll impart some of that my juggling skills to her. Hopefully she'll be better than me. That would be. <laughs> well, my children are way better than I was at the same age. So, okay. Well, that's because they have such a good teacher. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I taught myself and I taught them. So, yeah. Um, all right. So I think it was, it was either last week or it was recently that, uh, Paul Bachman passed yes. and, uh, I read his obituary, and you were quoted in it, and it sounds like he had an impact on, on your life. So uh, since he was so important to the juggling community, I was wondering if you could just remember him a little bit and share how he impacted your life. Sure. Um, well, I, I first met Paul when I was a teenager because uh, you know, he's just been a an ever-present uh, uh, person around uh, the IJA conventions and festivals and you know, a huge supporter of jugglers everywhere and so i've known him for a long long time uh and then when i started uh my collection um uh he was a big supporter you know he, he and i had the two largest collections in the world of uh, juggling props and videos and photos and all that so uh if he got two of something he'd send me one if i got two of something <laughs> i'd send him so we we always were supporting each other and we, uh, uh, at the IJ Festival in 2013 in Bowling Green, Ohio, uh, we combined our collections together uh, mm -hmm. to show them in the History Lounge there. And that was a, a great, great thing. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I talked to him pretty much every week and uh, I miss him. He, he was a great guy. Um, man, he, he loved juggling. He loved jugglers. Uh, and... Uh, there are so many people he mentored, so many uh, uh, really famous jugglers that he was a good friend to, and uh, it's, it's a big loss for the juggling world. Hmm. Thanks for that. You're welcome. Uh, would Would you say that his he kind of helped you get into collecting props? He didn't help me get started, but once I did get started, uh, he was a big support. Um, uh, when I still, 
it's a long story of how I started this. Um, the, the museum kind of was my uh, midlife crisis. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I had went through uh, some really, really tough, a really, really tough time in my life uh, where uh, v- lots of bad things happened all at the same time. And um, uh, shortly after that, uh, someone contacted me and said, uh, hey, I've got three Van Wick, uh, I know three Van Wick clubs that are for sale. And I thought you might be interested because uh, I know you love juggling history and you're from C- the Cincinnati, Ohio area, which is where Edward Van Wick, the first retail club maker, was from. And I said, oh, yes, I would love that. So I bought these three Van Wick clubs. And uh, I said, hey, you know, this, this, it's cool having these. Uh, maybe I should start a little collection where I can take around and, and show a little bit of juggling history. Mm-hmm. And so it literally started with three clubs. And that, that only started uh, in t- June of 2012. So it's only wow. been a little over three years. Mm-hmm. And I, I it, it just shook off like crazy mm-hmm. and um every every week almost i get another package or two uh to add to the museum and uh you know about a year ago paul paul said to me he said you've only been doing this two years or so and your collection's already bigger than mine mm. at least the, the props end of it paul right. paul's right. video and, and photo collections were, were enormous okay uh, and, and so was his prop collection but um, mine got to be a little bit bigger. Now he, he had some stuff in his collection that I would love to have. Um, uh, but I've got stuff that I know he, he would have loved to have had as well. So, right. uh, that's just the nature of what we were doing. Um, but once I got started, um, <clears throat> he and I, uh, started talking all the time and, and just sh- sharing stories of how we got the props. And mm-hmm. we would talk about, all the jugglers that uh, that were in our collections, uh, you know, stuff yeah. that we got from them, and uh, everything like that. So, so it, it was. What, what it was I'm hearing of, is that you you love talking juggling history. Oh yeah, I do. You know, uh, I love I love jugglers. I love juggling. I love the history of it. Um, I've always, even before I started the collection, I was very involved in juggling history. I had written written a number of things for. Um, juggle magazine and uh i i was I, I, even from from the very early days when i just when i started juggling i was enamored with the history of it as mm-hmm. well so uh you know every time i would get a juggling magazine i would read it cover to cover i'd almost memorize everything in it um mm-hmm. and so uh yeah i from the from the start i was very into juggling history okay so what would what would you say is a good place to start for aspiring juggling prop collectors um well you you could start with uh, harry lynn clubs are kind of the e maybe the most important and yet easiest thing to find um you know harry lynn made he was the world's main juggling club uh manufacturer from 1919 to the late, oh, about 1960 or so. Um, And so (coughs) uh, they're out there. In fact, uh, we're going to be auctioning off some Harry Lynn clubs uh, sometime in the fairly near future because we just got uh, a ton of them, more than we can possibly display. Mm -hmm. Um, So we're going to be auctioning off some to help uh, get some money to buy some other collections. Uh, so that would be good. Just uh, a, a variety of some of the old clubs or, or the old, you can see over this shoulder here, there are old juggling sets that you can find on eBay sometimes. Okay. Uh, those would be a start. Uh, if someone really wants to start collecting, uh, I think they should probably contact me. I could probably point them in the right direction okay. in a number of ways. Cool. Yeah, it sounds like <laughs> if they're into it, you'd love to talk to them. Sure. All right. Uh, Who would you say has supported you the most throughout the years? 
Oh my. Uh, well, my, my brother, <laughs> my brother supported me a lot. Uh, uh, just um, with the museum stuff, he's been a huge, huge help. Um, you know, I've got juggling friends all over the world, um, and in lots of different ways, they have been a, a, a huge help. Uh, whether it's sending me props from from their their career, or a, a relative, or um, pointing me in, in certain directions. Uh, that have got me things for the museum. That's been huge. Uh, as far as my juggling career, I, the first juggler I ever met was is still a good friend of mine today, okay. and that's Mary Spar. Mm -hmm. uh, and she she literally was uh, the first person I talked to when I walked into my first juggling uh, convention or festival ever when I was fourteen years old. And she's still a good friend today, so she she would be very important in that. Um, and there have just been lots of people who mm -hmm. have helped me along the way. All right. And as you were learning, who did you look up to the most? Uh, hold, on, hold on, I lost you there. The overall first juggler I ever saw uh, was Ernest Montego. Hold, hold on one second. You still there? Okay. Yep, I'm here. All right, I lost you there, so let, let me just ask that question again. Okay. Um, what juggler would you say you looked up to the most when you were first learning? Uh, that would be Ernest Montego. Um, he, uh, he was the first juggler I ever saw on TV after I started juggling, and uh, I couldn't believe the things he was doing. And uh, I think... Uh, you know, the, the fact that I do a lot of ball spinning and combination tricks and things of that sort uh, really can be traced back to, to seeing him hmm. uh, right after I started and saying, you know, I, I want to, that, that's, that's the style I want to do. Now, I'm not a dancer <laughs> like, like Ernest Montego uh, was, but uh, that's for sure. But uh, he's someone who really uh, I, I was enamored with at first. Uh, and the fact that he's now a friend of mine uh, is is a great thing. I just skyped with him for about an hour oh, wow. weeks ago. Uh, you know, he's one of the greatest jugglers of all time, and and uh, I, that's been probably the coolest thing about the whole museum thing is I now get to to call some of the greatest jugglers of all time my friend because I, I I interact with them because of the museum. Mm -hmm. uh, I just spent. Um, uh, an afternoon with Dieter Tasso uh, two weeks ago. I was performing in Florida and and stopped by and saw him. And he, you know, he's in his 80s and still performing. Wow. And, uh, you know, one of the greatest acts of all time. Uh, you know, he, he performed uh, kicking up the, the, the cups and saucers onto his head on a unicycle on a slack wire. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> While uh, he was eighty, <laughs> no, it, 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 when he was in in the fifties is when okay. he did. Um, one of the cool things about juggling and jugglers in general is the fact that someone can be one of the greatest jugglers of all time, and you can still get to know them and be their friend. Yep. I mean, when I started out, you know, people I looked up to were Ernest Montego and. Dan Holtzman from the Raspini brothers and all these people. And now they're like good friends of mine. I can call them up anytime I want and talk to them or whatever. Yeah. And, and that's, you don't get that in other fields. Yeah. That's definitely you something know. I've noticed already, you know, getting online, making these videos, posting them and like feeling supported immediately, even though they weren't that great, you know? Um, but like, you know, other jugglers saying, you know, here's another juggler will support him. Right. Yeah. I mean, your average uh, everyday magician can't just call up David Copperfield and say, hey, can I ask you something? But you can do that in the world of juggling, and that's really cool. Right. I agree. All right, so you've, you've done a lot of performances throughout the year, so this is uh, going to be a hard question. Maybe. Maybe it'll be easy. Um, but of all the performances you've done, which one sticks out as kind of like, that was my favorite one. That was I had a great time doing that. Oh my, that's tough to say. That's because I've done, we figured out over 10,000 professional oh shows <laughs> because, 
uh, and that that includes uh, you know like ten shows a day, six days a week for seven years at a music park, and all these other things. I'm uh, that's really really tough to say. Um, uh, performing on the Today Show with my twin brother was okay extremely memorable. That that was uh, you know I performed on TV a lot of times, but that was that was one of the cooler experiences, mm-hmm. uh, and just and just winning that, especially because it was done uh, here in the age of Facebook, where ninety percent of my friends from all over the world knew I was going to be on and could watch it, and it, if they couldn't watch it live, it, it was online an hour later and they could watch it, mm-hmm. and and just the outpouring of love when we won that, and uh, so that was certainly very memorable. Um, you know, with my juggling ministry, I've done uh, Billy Graham Crusade. I've done uh, Focus on the Family's 25th anniversary celebration. Um, I've opened for a lot of famous Christian singers and bands and things. Mm-hmm. And some of those have been very memorable as well. That's great. Well, while you're talking about that, um, <coughs> tell us a little bit about what you do for your ministry. Okay. Um, well, for eight, in the last 18 years, I've been doing a full-time Christian ministry with my juggling. Um, uh, I looked at other variety arts and saw that, that there were a lot of people who were using those skills uh, to present the Bible, to teach the Bible, uh, and no one was really doing it, as far as I knew, uh, with juggling. And so I said, and, and at that time I was actually I was working as a as a juggler, but I was pursuing a side career as a uh, Christian songwriter, hmm. and. Um, Several people came to my life and said, hey, you're very creative, you have a heart for ministry, and you're this really good juggler. Why not combine the juggling with those two other things and create something new? And I said, duh. Um, So that's why I started doing it. I started uh, taking my creativity and applying it to my juggling routines uh, rather than to music for a while and uh, ended up creating – I've now now over five hours of material that I can share. Wow! Um, that uses all the juggling skills I have and teaches the Bible in various ways. Um, so I've written three books on how to do that, and it's taken me all over the world uh, doing mm-hmm. that. And you've seen people get the stories by oh, watching yes. you juggle and tell oh, the stories. Tons, tons. Um, uh, a lot of people have become Christians. Uh, through you know, at least, at least partially through through my uh, right. sharing of those things, I can't can't really take credit. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, and I, I have a friend of mine who was at a, a, a missions conference recently, and uh, people were going around telling stories about how they became a Christian. And there was a, a young lady there in her twenties who said, "I, I became a Christian uh, at a." a a Christian jugglers uh, performance. And then my friend afterwards went up to her and said, was it David Cain, the juggler for Jesus? And she's like, yes. (laughs) He said, that's my friend. So that was really cool. That's awesome. Because who knows how many other people you've impacted. Yeah. I, uh, that's the weird thing is I don't really get to see the, Mm -hmm. the, the end process of that, but, Mm uh, uh, I enjoy doing it. And I, uh, I believe I, I'm having an eternal impact with what I'm doing. Uh, and so it makes it all worth it in that way. Uh, and I, I really have a perfect job for, you know, I, I love the ministry I'm doing. I love the, the work I'm doing with, with the museum and with the, the writing uh, for e-juggle and all the history stuff. And so uh, juggling has been, just been very, very good to me in, in many, many aspects of my life. Uh, whether it's the ministry or the the history and museum stuff, um, but uh, yeah, it's just been uh, kind of every part of my life, more or less, has intersected with uh, with juggling. So that's okay. been a great thing for me. You totally just predicted what my next question was going to be. So okay, great, great job. Um, and then my next question is: is how have you seen juggling impact others around you? Oh my. Um, well, certainly, uh, I believe that it uh, through the ministry that's impacted people 
uh, just through uh, their their knowledge of Jesus and the Bible and everything. Uh, but also just um, <clears throat> you know, it's a it's a conduit to relationships with people. I I know people. <laughs> This super introverted guy knows people all over the world, mm-hmm. and it's because of Jeff. Mm-hmm. And so that's cool. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I have no idea what my life would be like without Jeff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it's it's uh, permeates so many aspects of my life. Right. Uh, yeah. It's and for so long. I'm, that I don't really know what my life would be like without juggling. Right. It's really really hard to imagine what it would be like right. without juggling. All right. Well, thanks for sharing so much. You said earlier that you're you're pretty introverted about your personal life, but you've really opened up here, and I think it's going to be really inspiring for other people that watch. Um, Thank you. I've got a few quick, just quick one-liner questions. Okay. Um, and sure. then and then we'll be done with the interview. So, um, what's your favorite trick? My favorite trick uh, that I do personally or yes. that other people have done? That you do I personally. do personally. Uh, pe- whenever people ask me that, I usually say um, it's a trick that no one else in the world, as far as I know, has ever done. Okay. And that is uh, spin a ball on my finger, spin a ball on top of that, and then you kick up a third ball for a triple spinning ball. Oh, step. wow, yeah. So uh, don't th- I don't know of anyone else that's ever done that trick. Okay. Uh, uh, so yeah, that that's that's my typical answer, and it's probably still true. Okay. And what about other people? What do you like to watch? Uh, I like to watch weird combination tricks or amazing combination tricks. Um. Uh, you know, kind of like with the things I do, I, I'm. I am pretty varied in what I enjoy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I like creativity. I like people that are not just doing the same old thing. Um, you know, and I even have a series of uh, articles that I write that kind of ask people to try and do new things that no one's done before. Okay. Um, and so uh, I like watching, as far as balls, rings, and clubs, I like clubs. I like to watch clubs. Um, I get bored easily with ball ball videos for some reason. Okay. <laughs> um, Except for Mike yeah, Morris, because those are those are yeah, fun to watch. <laughs> they are fun. They are fun to watch. Um, yeah, he, he has some really cool new patterns. Um, I just like I like innovation. I like innovation. So uh, you know, especially when you're a historian and so you're. You know what people have done over the last, the last 200 years, mm-hmm. and you've been around the juggling community for 34 years. You've seen a lot. Yep. And so I, I want to see new things that, yep. that I've never seen before. I'm with you on that. Uh, your The favorite festival you've ever been to? Probably uh, the IJA Festival in 1991. Okay. Because we had Gatto there, we had Ignatov there, we had just a bunch of people there. Um, was that the one that Trixie was at as well? It may have been. Just it, it was just really, really good. And we had it was the largest IJA uh, convention or festival ever. We had sixteen hundred people, um, and so it was just uh, an amazing time to be there and and to see all that. All right. Uh, your favorite prop to use? Uh, either clubs or spinning balls. Okay. And then your favorite brand of juggling props? Wow. Huh. I don't want to tick off any of my friends, so I'll say... Van Wick clubs. <laughs> That's a cop out, but I'll let you pass. <laughs> no, I, 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 no I, I'll actually answer something. Um, I, I I've been using this. This is this is legit. I've been using the exact same set of Todd Smith clubs for about twenty twenty three years. Wow, they've never broken. I use them every day in performance and in practice. 
Wow. So you got to give props to Todd Smith for making a, yep. a, a good, good product there. No pun intended. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. One day those clubs are going to be in somebody's juggling collection. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Lastly, you have a word of advice for aspiring jugglers? Sure. Uh, the best way, the easiest way to be the best at what you do is to be the only person who does it. Wow, that's good. Do some, you know, if I, if, if I wanted to be a, uh, now, now I, I am someone who has an hour-long show, so I need to learn lots of different skills. But if you want to be a juggler who has a 10-minute act, you know, circus act or something like that. Get some new prop that no one's ever done or do something different with the props. To, like I said, the best way, the easiest way to be the best at what you do is to be the only person that does it. Do something completely, completely different. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I see jugglers, I've always seen jugglers who they spend countless, countless, countless hours doing what everyone else in the world is doing. Right. <laughs> and to, you know, if, if you're a hobbyist, that's perfectly fine. But if you want to be a performer, it's the wrong way to go mm -hmm. about doing it. You know, just thinking about that, you're really, you're really into the history of juggling. And initially without like talking to you, you might think that you kind of like how the things used to be, but it sounds like you really, you like more seeing how things have changed and being a part of that. It's, it's both. Now, uh, now I get asked constantly about how did such and such do this trick 120 years ago or whatever. And I, and I, I consult with a lot of people who, uh, cause there's a new trend, which is people, uh, now learning acts that have never been seen by anyone living right now. Okay. I, there, there, there's a big trend of people learning um, gentleman juggler tricks or tricks from, you know, just long, long ago. Um, in fact, uh, I, I just, I, we're going to release uh, on an upcoming article, a video that shows, um, and this ties in pretty well shows some tricks that have never been seen that haven't been done by anyone living in maybe a hundred years. Okay. Um, but it also will take the same type of prop and show you brand new innovations, right. uh, variations that no one's ever done okay. before. So I like, I, I, I love to see because most I'll tell you this. And this is a weird thing. Uh, probably most of the juggling tricks that have ever been done have never been seen by today's jugglers. Mm -hmm. Well, there's at least a giant percentage. Mm -hmm. Because when I read back through the acts of people like Cinquevalli and Kara and Salerno and people like that, we have never seen those tricks. Okay. Um, and so there is a huge opportunity right there to do things that no one else is doing. But then also you can innovate the things that people are doing now in new directions. Mm -hmm. And so th there's just, uh, there's almost no, if you're a performer and you want to do be different, there's almost no excuse because yeah. <laughs> you can either look to the past or right. look to the future right. and do stuff that's different when, from what everyone else is doing. Awesome. All right. Well, it sounds like, it seems like we could talk forever, but, we got to come to an end here. So sure. where can people find you in a final word? Uh, my ministry, they can find me at christianjuggler.com. Uh, the museum, they can look me up at uh, www.historicaljugglingprops.com. And then my writing, you can look up uh, look up David Kane on eJuggle. Uh, I guess it's... I uh, Google e juggle. <laughs> it's like um, e juggle dot e sign dot yeah, yeah, dot yeah, com. Right. So I, I don't <laughs> Google e juggle David Kane and you'll see I've written about eighty uh, articles for them. Uh, and I, I'll do a little plug uh, coming hopefully next year. Uh, no, not next year. The year after that uh, will be my juggling history book. Oh wow! Um, we're, I'm hoping to have it available at the 
2017 IJA Festival. It will be the 70th anniversary of the IJA, and I hope to have my uh, volume one of it. I'm not I'm not going to reveal the name of it yet, but it will be a multiple volume uh, uh, book. But volume one should be available um, summer of 2017. All right, a little sneak preview of what's to come. Yes. Sounds like we all got to sign a non-disclosure. Uh, people were already trying to order it, and I said, let me write it first. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I'm making a pretty good progress with it. Um, so, all right. Uh, good, good stuff. Good stuff. And a final work to, to send everybody off. Um, keep, keep being open. We you talked earlier about. Uh, jugglers being so open to share uh, and to uh, interact even with the people who are at the top of the profession, keep, keep doing that. Um, uh, that's one of the, the best things about juggling, and I, I hope we never lose that. All right. Well, thanks a lot again for uh, being on with us tonight. It's been my pleasure. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed, and uh, until next time, keep on juggling. Thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, be sure to support the channel. Leave a comment, like, share, and subscribe.